have this study guide. When we look at question one, we have negative exponents. Where in my jam, what date can I find information about negative exponents? Emma? Yep. 9, 6, 22. Yesterday, right? We did that negative exponent information yesterday. So we're not going to solve this right now. We're just going to go through and find more dates. Where can I find information for question two? This is the quotient rule. Where can I find information about the quotient rule? Delaney? Yep. Great. How about the zero rule? Where can I find information about that? So we're looking at our table of contents. Molly? Um, this one yep, Tuesday, 9, 6, 22. Thank you. And then number four is going to require a combination of rules. Hmm. The first one's going to be the product rule. When did we have the product rule? What day, Nick? Today. That was power of product rule, so oh. we're not quite there yet. Lily? Yep, Thursday, 825. Okay, and then after you use the product rule, you're going to need to know more about that negative rule. So that's back on this Tuesday, 9, 6. Okay, so we're not actually solving these quite yet. I just want to get you in the habit of figuring out where to find the information. Let's look at questions five, six, seven, and eight together right now. These look a lot harder than they actually are, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're going to figure out what can X be and what can Y be so that when I use the rule, I come up with five to the eighths. The only catch is that X and Y cannot be the same because otherwise we would not need two variables, right? So x and y can't be the same value. So what am I going to do with this x and y? What math am I going to do with that to get to the 8? Tyler? Not quite. Well, this is multiplication, but what's the rule we use when we're doing the, the same base with the products? We're going to add them. Yep. So what two numbers can I add to make 8? Remember, they cannot be the same number, so do not say 4 and 4. What could I do there? Beautiful? Sure. What else? There's more than one answer for these. What else, Molly? Six and two. Six and two. Yep. One and seven. One and seven. What about negative two and ten? Would that work? Yeah, I'm going to add them up and I'm going to get eight. So you can get creative. You can keep it simple. I will know right away if your values work. Again, they cannot be the same. All right, so how about number six? This is the quotient rule. So what am I going to do here with this x and y to make 5 to the 8th? Lily? Subtract. Subtract. So what could x and y be? Now keep in mind, you have to subtract the numerator minus the denominator. You can't mix match it. Delaney? I want them to, I want them to come up with an 8, though. So when I subtract them, I want it to equal 8. What could it be? Lily? 12 and 4. 12 and 4? Yeah. She took yours. 16 and 8. Beautiful. 10 and 2, right? There's all sorts of things you could do here. Yes? 11 and 3. 11 and 3. We'll choose those. I haven't heard that today. 11 and 3. All right. Now we get down to number seven. This is the power rule. What am I going to do with this x and y to get to five to the eighth? Mm -hmm. Multiply. So there's only a couple combinations I can do here. You're kind of limited. What's one of them? Molly? Four and two. Four and two. What's the other one? Emma? Eight and one. Eight and one. 
And this doesn't matter which is which because it's multiplying in any order. Okay, I want everybody to go to the notes from yesterday in your jam, Tuesday, September 6th, and look at the negative rule notes and look at the last three questions and tell me what does this x have to be to force it to be 5 to the 8th? What does that x have to be? Well, then I heard from mm, one that was here. Coco, what does that x have to be? So if you look at the last three examples on the negative exponent notes. A negative 8. Excellent. It has to be negative 8 because then it would be forced to be 5 to the 8th power. Okay? Great job. The hardest part for these is going to be remembering that you're trying to make an 8 or whatever number they tell you on the quiz. And like I said before with our last quiz, the study guide is incredibly similar. Like questions 5, 6, 7, and 8 will look like this just with different expectation, right? It's not going to be 5 to the 8th. It might be like 8 to the 5th. I don't know, okay? How are we doing on time? Pretty good. All right, turn the page. Let's look at this one. I want you to read the directions for number 9 to yourself. Read them to yourself, please. Tyler. Not tonight, tomorrow night. Okay. Yep, we're not taking it home tonight because it won't be done yet. All right, so what is this question asking us to do? What's one thing you know you have to do based on this question? What do we have to do? Delaney? We're going to have to simplify, right? We know there's going to be some multiplication here with this 4 and this 2, okay? So here's the goal for this setup. We're going to work through the process of simplifying this and anytime we see something in our process that matches one of these four we circle it okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply four and two so I'm going to have three to the negative fifth times three to the what eighth do you see this anywhere in these four choices nope so we're going to move on what would I do now with this negative 5 and this 8? I'm going to add them. What is negative 5 plus 8? Together. 3. 3 to the 3rd. Do you see 3 to the 3rd in any of these choices? So we're going to circle B. But we're not done yet. We're going to keep going. What is 3 times 3 times 3? 27. Do we see 27 anywhere in these choices? So that's what you would do. There is a point for knowing that this shouldn't be circled. There's a point for knowing that this should be circled. Another point for knowing this should not be circled. So each of these is worth a point whether or not you accurately circled or left it alone. Okay, so this should be a pretty easy four points that you guys can get. And to clarify, 27 is not the same as 1 27th, right? You can't just 
oh, well, they both have a 27, and they're, I could write this. No. This is a very small value, and this is 27, right? This would be a, a decimal, a teeny tiny decimal value, and this is not. Yes? It is, but that's not the same as 1 over 27. Yeah. So that's what people get confused about. You're absolutely right. They think of it as an improper fraction, and they're like, well, there's a 1, but you can't just put it anywhere. Okay? Let's look at number 10. We have a few minutes we can do this. We've got power of a quotient. What am I going to do with this 2, with this 3 and 5? What am I going to do here? Participation is overwhelming. What am I going to do, Emma? Multiply the two exponents. Yep, I'm going to distribute these. So I'm going to get 2 to the 6 over 2 to the 10th. Do we see that in any of these four choices? Yes. Sure do. Right? But I'm not done. I can still do more. What am I going to do now, Delaney? Yeah. And what is 6 minus 10? Yep. 2 to the negative 4. Do I see that in any yeah. of those? I sure do. I can't leave negative 4 like that. So what am I going to do to fix it? Tyler? Yep. Do I see that in any of these choices? Yes. Sure do. And then I can even continue this. What's 2 to the 4th power? Anybody want to guess? 16. Do I see that in any of the choices? No. So each of these steps that I took showed up as a part of the process that's equivalent. Those are the equivalent expressions. Yes? So, I have a question. I remember you said that the 1 dash would be like the 8. So, are you saying like... Now, you would, would you would have like the 8 there? Well, this, no. So, you're not going to choose like B and D on the quiz, and you're not going to choose like all four of these. But you'll have two problems like this where you have to simplify it and find the matching expressions. Okay? All right, we will finish this tomorrow. It is not homework.